you guys. I'm going to answer a question I get a lot. And uh, revelation unnecessarily scares a lot of people. I, I'm going to clear. I'm just going to make a blanket statement here. The churches Jesus wrote to don't exist anymore. Okay. Now, you can take all scripture as profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We can all learn from the instruction he's giving these churches. Okay. Now, I've done a video where Jesus threatens to take away their candlestick. Ooh, you're going to lose salvation. No, the seven candlesticks are the seven churches, okay? He was threatening the pastor, the messenger, the angel, the church, that they would lose their church if they didn't return to the first works. What's first works? The gospel. The first love is Jesus Christ. Okay, so... The church of Laodicea is often said to be today's church. It's not. It was a literal church called the church of Laodicea. It was in Laodicea, wherever that was. <laughs> Doesn't exist anymore, people. They all, now, every church can learn from one of these churches, what they're doing well and what they're not doing right. Okay? It was just a review of the churches that I believe Paul mostly had planted and he's, uh, John gets a message to give to those churches. Okay? That's all. It's, it, it's not. <clears throat> so the question is, what is a lukewarm Christian? There's no such biblical thing as a lukewarm Christian. You won't see it anywhere. It says, thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Did he say lukewarm Christian? Lukewarm believer? No. It's a lukewarm church. It's a threat to the church, okay? He's going to spew the church out of his mouth because they aren't, they're comfortable in their wealth and they're not focusing on their first love. And that's him and the gospel, okay? Uh, it, it's not a person. It's not, he's not saying he'll spew, is he going to spew a believer out? No. This, this is about loss of the church, he's, he's telling the, the messenger, if this doesn't change, I'm going to take away the church, the purpose, the anointing. Not anybody's salvation, please, people. Read in context. Nothing in Revelation should scare any saved person, okay? Let's look at Revelation 3, okay? And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, let me move this little thing out of the way. These things, okay, so this was a specific church. None of these churches are here anymore, okay? These things saith he that has seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast had a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. This is not to a single human being, okay? This is to the messenger, they call it the angel, but it's the messenger. It could be the pastor, the leader of the church, whoever. Could be, could be an angel supposed to give the message to the pastor. We don't know, but it was to a specific leader, all right? Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If, there shall, if thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. Now, we don't know specifically what they have to repent of. Sounds like these things. They're not turning back to him, okay? Uh, this is not people not repenting of their sins, would you please? Ah, it's just crazy, people. Twist this. All right. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Okay, by the way, it tells you how you overcome even our faith. We overcome because he overcame. You can look those verses up, all right? It's it, it's really resting in the finished work of Christ. Th this is specifically to churches that aren't even here anymore. But we could apply them to whatever specific church we happen to be in and learn how to get better and be better churches, okay? But this isn't about saved people being spewed out of his mouth. I'm just so tired of it. And self-righteous people love to say, you're lukewarm because they all think they're doing the good works. They go to church and they were willing to give up this sin and that sin because they haven't had their mouth stopped by the law yet. They haven't realized that everything they think is a sin, practically. They, they can't get it. You know what? The, the worst sin of all is legalism. Because it masquerades as if it's in God's service. And it's not. Okay? 
It's for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Nobody's got anything to boast in at all. Uh, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of people saying, if you're lukewarm, you won't be taken into wrath. They just make this stuff up. If you are part of the body of Christ, if you are born of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, how long are you sealed? Until the day of redemption, when your body's redeemed. All the rapture is, is God's promise that if you're part of his body, he's not going to leave a toe, foot, or a hand behind people. And it's not based on your righteousness. Where do they get this garbage? Your righteousness didn't get you saved, but it can get you raptured? No, that's just the continuation of a promise God made you, that you have eternal life in Christ. And if you are alive and remain and you're part of his body, he'll give you a glorified body because it'll be redeemed. It's a promise, okay? Self-righteous people always think they're one of the good ones, don't they? Oh, the lukewarm are going to be spewed out of his mouth. He's going to leave them behind in the wreck. They just grab this verse and that, just make nonsense out of it. It's just nobody's going to boast, I'm raptured because I was so faithful. You didn't do anything to get saved or raptured. It's a promise of God that he keeps to his body. You'd be born again. Trust in the finished work of Christ, and then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. All right? It has nothing to do with your works. All right. Here we go. All right. Let, now, the, per, the the people you're you're probably thinking about are a Laodicea. Let's see. Uh, he writes to the angel, the Church of Philadelphia. And then, oh, here we go. The Laodicean Church. Here we go. This is probably the one everybody freaks out about. Laodicea Church doesn't even exist anymore. A lot of people like to use parallels. Laodicea Church represents the church today. Well, you know what? There's churches of Philadelphia, too. There's real churches that stand on the finished work of Christ, preach the gospel, evangelize, do the works they're supposed to do, and keep him first. So there's those kind of churches, too. Okay? It's not just, this is the time of Laodicea. There's always been churches like Laodicea, Philadelphia, and Sardis. There's always been churches that have error and problems. Okay? Okay? But these churches that are specifically written to, gone. All right? Gone. That was a threat. Take them away. All right. And the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Pick a side. I mean, it, it, it's clear to me. It's... Their works are neither cold nor hot. They're not really... Well, why is to say they're not denying what Jesus did, but they aren't really giving him all the credit either. It kind of seems like that. But their works could have been... We don't know what their works were. We don't know. You know, it doesn't seem like they're really... Uh, they're just not doing what he wants them to do. Um, now, there were a lot of people... You got to remember the context is there was a lot of people dying for their faith back then. Sometimes people wouldn't stand up for their faith. All right, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, what Jesus said, he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. No man will snatch you out of my hand. No man will snatch you out of my father's hand. All right, so uh, this he's not talking to a saved believer. This is to a church, a church, okay, a group, a church. He's talking to the leader of this church because the works of that church are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. You know, that's what he's saying. But because thou sayest, I am rich, again, they are resting on their wealth, okay? And not realizing they're spiritually bankrupt. Because uh, he says, but thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, okay? This is about spiritual nakedness and poverty. Remember when it talks about a famine in the land? It's the word of God. There's a famine for the word of God here. I counsel to thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That, that, what does he say? That we're tried as by fire so to grow our character. Okay, this is to a church. Again, not individuals. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes have, that thou mayest see. Okay, once you're saved, born of God by the true gospel, you have the robe of righteousness. God clothes you in his robe of righteousness. Seek for his righteousness. Now, how does that happen? I just told you, for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You don't trust in anything you do. You trust completely in what Christ did. And you rest in that. And then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and you get it. Things start to make sense in Scripture. And he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. 
Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay, of what? This stuff. This stuff. Okay? Uh, so, he, you know, he loves the church. He wants it to succeed. But he's saying they're really, it sounds like there's a famine of the word of God there. That they're just resting in their, you know, wealth and comfortable. and They're not really hot and they're not really cold. They're not, you know, it's, it, see, I used to say, you know, if, you, if you're cold, you know what you need. You need a blanket. If you're hot, you know what you need. You need some cold water. Well, they're just comfortable. Remember, you hear the story about the frog slowly boiling to death in the lukewarm water. You know, it, it's like you know what you need. But they think they don't need anything. That's what he's saying here. You, you don't realize you are spiritually like naked and poor. Um, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. I told you, well, how do we overcome? Even our Faith, okay? It's our faith that overcomes. You don't give private interpretation. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. There you go. These literal churches do not exist anymore. They don't. They're gone. Now, I, I said before, you can take uh, these. See, everybody's so self-centered. It's talking to us. It, no, he's not. I mean, you can learn from what he says to them, you know. It says all scripture is profitable for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. Of course, we can learn from it. But he's not specifically talking to you. He's talking to this pastor, to the leader of this church. All right? It has nothing to do with salvation. It has nothing to do with being raptured. It has nothing to do with not living good enough as a believer. It's just, these things just drive me crazy when, when they don't let the Bible interpret itself. All right, don't don't let these things give you fear. There's so much false teaching out there. It's just crazy. I, I don't understand why people just don't get it, man. They just don't get it. All right, I, I hope I answered that again. All right, God bless. Is it not 